Steve Hay here for the wonderful world of woodworking and carpet tech. I've been asked to do some eastery projects, some of which you might already have seen, and this is another one. It's making an Easter style box. I'm not actually making the box this, uh, this particular project. I'm doing an inlaid Easter themed rabbit in a box top, and we'll get around to making the box at some later stage. This is the drawing I've made that I'm going to inlay into a box and we'll use different timbers. You can see here I've got a variety of little offcuts of some veneer that I've had kicking around. So we'll see how we go. First things first, this method I'm using now is, actually I thought about it, it's one I haven't used for over seven years. It's called a double bevel uh, cut and for that I'm using this scroll saw here and the double bevel is a way that you put two bits of veneer together overlapping and then when you cut the top part will fit precisely into the bottom part and there's no gaps. The technique I'm using I'm not sure uh, what it's called. I learned it from a furniture maker and a fantastic marketry artist Silas Koff several years ago and it's building the piece piece by piece. With this particular project here there would be a lot of what they call piercing work which means you actually cut into the job and then cut a piece out and place it in. This process that I learned from Silas requires a minimum amount of piercing. You actually piece the job together bit by bit and it grows. It, it takes a while to get your head around it. I can't fully explain it because I haven't got that much time, but you'll get the idea and there won't be too much talking while I'm doing the project because I've got to be thinking. But I hope you enjoy it, and if you've got bits of veneer, it might be something you would like to try. The other sort of marketry, of course, is using a knife. That's the standard knife I normally use for marketry, and what I do with that is basic marketry, I cut the shapes out. So this, again, is a, a different technique. I think I know about six or seven different ways of creating marketry, and this is another one, uh, but uses a scroll saw, and it's very, very precise. So, let's go. First of all, you need some tracing paper. I like the heavy cartridge type tracing paper, and trace over the piece that you want to inlay. And then start looking at what timbers do you want for the different parts of the picture you're putting in. I've chosen some poplar for part of this and we'll see how we go. So place it underneath your design, then with carbon paper, copy the lines you've actually got on the tracing paper. And there we have it there. So I'll go to the scroll saw and we will start cutting this out. I have it on slow speed. This piece here that I've cut, I'm now going to place on this piece here. And eventually you'll start to see this grow. You can use paper veneer tape. I'm just going to use masking tape at the moment.
that's what we've got. The next piece is I have this little round medallion. So I'm going to cut that out over this portion here. So I'm going to come in here, cut that circle out. This piece now fits precisely into where we cut it out. And the next part is I've got to take this and put it into this part of the egg here. And at the moment, that's all that egg looks like. Place that over there. And draw the part of the egg that actually has to cut in to that existing egg. That's not there at the moment. Like that. Get some tape. Tape it into place. And on the back so it doesn't move. And we'll now cut this portion out here. So now this part will fit nicely into the part below. Like that. Now the rabbit is going to be in white. So what we can now do is cut this portion out here and we'll put it into what we're going to make the rabbit out of. You've got to sort of dissect it in your mind when you're putting this together because it, it, <laughs> it drives you nuts, but it's a great way of working. It's got nice uh, dark bits in the burl. I'll have that as part of the rabbit's fur, I think. So we might just put that there. So now I'm going to draw the line where the egg intersects with the orientation I have of the rabbit. So I can come in here and then exit over there because the rabbit is up here. It all, it will all work out. I promise. Just gotta, just gotta have faith. Like that. Starting to build bit by bit. The next bit I'm gonna cut is this piece here, up the back, to the collar. Even though at the moment it doesn't look like the picture you're working from, it is getting there slowly and building up. If we lay the template over the top, you get a much better idea of how the picture is starting to take shape. Now this is the part I'm going to use for the head because I like the, the brown marks. All right, what I've got to do now is the ears.
put there. And what I'm going to do is just burn a little bit of that. Okay, you can see there it started to scorch. That's what I'm looking for. And yes, it does get very hot. So this part here is what I'm going to scorch. I don't have to leave it in for long. Whenever you're doing a scorching technique though, you have to get it darker than you think you'll need. If it continues to burn, just wet your fingers and tamp it off. And there, believe it or not, is the rabbit put together. You can see it all the colours behind it. What I've done is selected a piece of figured Tasmanian myrtle as the background. So we now place that on there. In this case I'm going to use masking tape because I want the carbon paper to transfer onto something that I can see. What I want to do is go over the entire outline of what I'm doing. So I'm going to start here. Now I've got the outline. What I'm going to do is cut that outline on the saw and then we can drop that into the background. And very early in the piece I mentioned about this does away with inserted pieces. but. For this, because I don't want to have a line, I'm going to use this, which is called an Archimedes drill, and it's got a number 71 drill bit in it. And I'm going to place a hole here, and then I'll thread the saw blade through the hole, and we can cut it out, and then the background will remain intact. So I'm going to do it just where the head meets. wanted to go through both pieces of the mirror. Have a look on the back. And there you can see a very, very fine hole. And the blade will thread through there. And there you can see the blade threaded through that hole. And away we go. And here we come back to the original starting spot. And that's it. We have cut it out. And there it is. Now we've just got to clean it up. And as with any veneering, whatever you do to one side, you've got to do to the other. So I'm going to glue this onto this piece of plywood, but on the back, I'll also glue a piece of veneer and that'll keep the integrity of the plywood nice and flat. Uh, normally I'd use hide glue because that's my preferred glue, but in this case, I'll use tight bond because it's quicker. You can dilute this by 10%. I don't want to do that much, but I will just thin it out a bit. And we get a reasonable sort of coverage. Also, by using um, water, you do increase the setting time. So it gives you a little bit more work time. That's one side. That on there. I'm going to put this in a press, but I will still use a veneer hammer just in case any lumps or anything's there that we don't want. I'm leaving um, all that sticky tape on too, we'll take that out at the very end.
inlay the rabbit. You can feel with your fingers if it's not in, if it's not just manipulate it. And then it'll go in nice and flush. Then you can get a top called or a top plate or whatever you like. And I'm going to go and put that in the press for a couple of hours. Then when I come back, we'll take all the top off and we'll see how it looks. All right, it has been in the clamp for a few hours, so it should be dry. Let's have a look. That's what it looks like. Not much at the moment, but we'll get all the tape off and then we'll have a look. So we'll just pick this off. Let's see, I might, might put it in the tail vise and that way I can use a cabinet scraper. what the Easter Bunny looks like. I chose this piece of veneer and that is a part of the burl, but that looks like his eye. What I thought I'd do for that is, you could if I was, if this was you know, a job, you might actually use marquetry and put veneer in there. But in this case, I'm gonna get a, a poker burner and I'm just gonna put a little bit of detail in there using a poker. And I reckon that's just about it. Be very careful if you're gonna use an electric sander with veneer. Normally I'll use the sanding block, but this is 180 and a very, very light touch. Now we'll just put a bit of oil on that and we'll rub that in. There you go. Now he can go into storage over there. That linseed oil will keep it clean. If it gets any dirt on it, it'll only be on the oil, so it'll wipe off quite easily. And down the track, we might even put that into a litter box. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. It's double bevel marquetry using a scroll saw. The technique, as I said, I don't know what it's called, but I learned it from Silas Koff. Uh, check him out on the internet. And it's just a bit of fun. It wasn't meant to be serious. It wasn't meant to be perfect. It wasn't meant to be an example to hang in the gallery. It was just a little exercise. We got a bit of time, you got a little bit of veneer, you want to try something different, try your hand at that and let me know how you go. And if you've got any questions, just ask in the column below or ask Carpetech and they can let me know and I'll do my best to answer all questions. Look forward to having you in the workshop again where we'll do some more of the wonderful world of woodworking with Carpetech. Bye for now. <laughs>